debated Mark Morano back when he was on uh, Jim Inhofe's uh, panel where he was saying, oh, there ain't no such thing as climate change and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's getting warmer. It's getting cooler, actually, since ever since night. You know, and they'll take like one little anomalous year. Like I think 1996 was an anomalously warm year. And they'll say, see, it's been getting cooler ever since then and, and ignore, you know, decades of data. And so when the Icelandic volcano erupted, I was wondering, is this going to have a, a Mount Pinatubo effect, or could it have, and slightly cool the planet for a year and give the climate de the change deniers another, uh, you know, another data point that they can use for a talking point? I really didn't know. We've dis we discussed this on the air and thought, well, let's get some experts on. Uh, right now, Dr. Brenda Eckwurzel is with us. If I mangled your name, uh, doctor, I, my apologies. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, you're with the Union of Concerned Scientists, uh, USCUSA.org, the website. Um, what 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 will be the consequences of this Icelandic volcano beyond its perpetual or continual, it seems, um, uh, diversion of air traffic in Europe? Well, what we know is the last time a really huge volcano that spewed some ash and small particulate matter up into the higher, higher part of the atmosphere, in fact, a little bit higher than, than this one in Iceland, was back in 1991, Pinatubo. And that cooled the earth for about a couple of years because it, it basically was um, reflecting uh, a lot of the sunlight that would normally hit uh, the surface of the earth. And so mm -hmm. during that time period, we had a little slowing of the pace of sea level rise, and uh, it also changed weather patterns and where rain fell and where it didn't. So those are some of the unintended consequences of volcanic ash and when it's small particles put up into the high, high, high part of the atmosphere. But after a few years, it gets washed out of the atmosphere through weather events, and uh, when it's in the lower area where we have weather, mm -hmm. which is sort of the planes that were flying... Um, we're in the area where the ash cloud was uh, spewing, and so that was a problem for navigation. But the climate-altering volcanoes actually go even higher into the atmosphere. Right. We're talking with Dr. Brenda Eckwurzel, of a uh, climate scientist of the uh, Union Conce of Concerned Scientists, UCSUSA.org. And uh, this this volcano, Ayafialahoka. <laughs> 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 yeah, isn't it amazing? There's not that many people who speak Icelandic, so most of right. us mispronounce it, I think. <laughs> or just say, you know, that volcano there. Um, right. Uh, so is, is, it, is there a possibility, probability, whatever, that it might right now be? For example, we, I, I live in Portland, Oregon, and in fact, I live on a river, and the river is higher than I've, than I've seen it this time of year ever. And people who've lived here for a lot longer than I have are... are you know, I mean, it's out of its banks in a lot of places. In fact, where I live, it's out of its banks. And and all of the reservoirs around here are like, you know, more than 90 percent full. So we're seeing uh, January kind of rain in June. Is this and I know that, you know, in in uh, India, they just had 130 degree heat, you know, record heat. We're seeing weather extremes all around the planet. Does any of this have to do with this volcano or is this simply the, the consequence of La Nina's, El Nino's and global climate change? They all are thrown into the mix, but what, what you're seeing in the Pacific Northwest is part of a pattern that we've seen over the last 30 years with a warming world. As hmm. you warm the atmosphere, it can hold more water vapor. And right. if you been, live in a place where it tends to rain or snow, you, a storm will be able to gather up more of that water vapor, clump it together, and you're more likely to have a torrential downpour. So blizzards and flood flooding producing rain events, torrential downpours are more likely with a global warming world. In fact, 13 federal agencies just released a report this past summer uh, where they divided up the United States and uh, parts of, say, the northwestern uh, part of the United States, you have seen between 1958 and 2007, a 16% increase in the volume of your most extreme, very heavy precipitation events. Yikes. So you're seeing that increase with those it's time, small, time, to sell my, time to sell my floating home. And uh, I mean, we live actually in the river. <laughs> and, and, Whoa. And, and move to a mountain. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 we, we definitely think that nationally the flood maps are going to have to be redrawn uh, when you take into account the climate change that's already occurred and oh. going forward what, what we may face, the future wow. risks. Yeah, okay. Um, on another topic, uh, uh, Dr. Eckwurzel, the 
Am I pronouncing your name right? Yes. Okay. It's, thank it's you. a little easier than I. I uh, right. I have found La That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, the University of Virginia is standing up against uh, Virginia Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli. He's trying to launch these investigations. Uh, against climate scientist Michael Mann and and associates. Over 900 Virginia scientists have signed a letter saying, uh, no, Cuccinelli is politicizing this. Uh, some quotes in their letters. Uh, scientists must do their work free of political intimidation. Cuccinelli is disregarding Virginia scientists' rights to do f- work free of political interference. Are, are we seeing, it seems to me, that, and, and tell me if I'm crazy here, it seems to me that ever since the Bush administration, and it hasn't stopped, frankly, uh, with the election of President Obama, we're seeing a, a, a reversion back to the Catholic Church in Galileo style uh, <laughs> inquest against science among people who have large vested interests. Uh, you know, back then the, the church wanted the earth to be the center of the universe. Now it's uh, the carbon fuel companies want to maintain their monopoly on energy um, in favor of vested interests. Is, is, is this continuing? Well, we hope that this uh, situation with the Virginia Attorney General is becomes a more isolated uh, event because it's absolutely critical that public health uh, researchers, our scientists and academic people and scientists within uh, federal agencies, state agencies, are free to explore wherever the scientific research takes them and be allowed to talk about the findings, even if it's unpopular with some people, what the results of the findings are. Right, and this and this certainly is, and that's, uh, we're talking to climate scientist Dr. Brenda Eckwurzel, and she is with the U.S., the, the Union of Concerned Scientists, USC, USA.org. Um, are there other what would you call them? Uh, in- inquests <laughs> going on beyond well, beyond the one that uh, Ken Cuccinelli is uh, trying to leverage into some kind of political advantage. Well, I I would I would call attention actually today is kind of a historic day on the uh, floor of the Senate at the very moment. Uh, we have had senators debate uh, a resolution that has been brought up by Senator Murkowski from the state of Alaska, yeah. um, which we view as. Uh, defiance of the scientific findings that EPA and the Supreme Court have ruled. Supreme Court asked the EPA to uh, re- respond to a ruling with it where is carbon dioxide a harm right. uh, to human health? And there's ample evidence, multiple lines of evidence, that carbon dioxide accumulating heat trapping gases in our atmosphere, primary cause of uh, climate change since the 1950s, represents a real risk to human health. Uh, many other creatures that are living out there, and as well as the, our quality of life. Right, and and, and, and Mur- Murkowski is trying to prevent the EPA from enforcing that. Absolutely, they're they're saying. And Blanche Lincoln is joining her in this, by the way. This so is transpartisan. This is a very important vote to to see where the senators, whether they stand up for uh, the sound science that many, many researchers around the United States and the world have been submitting findings, and the Environmental Protection Agency is acting on those findings. The Supreme right. Court is acting on those findings. And if the Senate is allowed to stand against science by uh, voting with this resolution, then that would be a um, very dire um, outcome. For well, it would be so, it would be sort of the takeover of the government of the United States by corporate interests. I mean, I, I can think of no other way to describe it, and you know, working in their interests. But but I'm not asking you to get political here, <laughs> uh, Dr. Brenda Eckwurzel uh, with the uh, Union of Concerned Scientists, great organization. UCS.USA or UCSUSA.org is the website. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Bye bye.